Hi everyone, I'm Hannah, the museum educator here at the Transcona Museum. Welcome to the first day of Craft With Us Digging History Week. Today we will be making edible dirt. So for this craft you're going to need, I'm just gonna point the camera downwards. For this craft you're going to need a plastic, like a clear plastic cup or a glass. Uh, you're going to need butterscotch chips and chocolate chips. You're going to need green food coloring to uh, color shredded coconut like I have here. You're going to need a pudding cup or you could use um, and make pudding from powder uh, and you're going to need a spoon to scoop it with. And then you're going to need two um, just regular Oreos. I crushed three Oreos. Uh, you could do more or less depending on how much you want. And four or five gummy worms, I would say. All right, so before we start doing this craft, um, please make sure that you wash your hands because we are going to be touching food and you can't eat the edible dirt after. So I've already washed my hands, but I'm also just gonna sanitize them just in case. So not only do you get to make a craft today, but you also get to make something that you can eat after, which is always exciting. All right, so here we have our cup. And the first layer that we're going to put down will be the two Oreos. So you're just gonna lay them flat to make sure they cover the bottom of the cup like this. So there's our first layer. And this layer represents bedrock. So bedrock is a solid rock that lies under loose or softer material. And it is the outermost layer of the Earth's crust. Nothing can grow in bedrock, but it supplies the soil uh, with the components that are very important for its future. So these Oreos represent bedrock. For our next layer, you're going to grab your butterscotch chips and your chocolate chips, and you're just going to kind of dump them in so that they cover the Oreos. And depending on how big the bottom of your cup is, they might kind of go around the Oreo, and that's fine. All right, so we got all that mixed up. Oops, one of my Oreos came above the chips, but that's all right. So the butterscotch and chocolate chips um, represent parent material. So parent material is formed from bedrock, which is what our Oreos are, after a long weathering process. And this is the spot where the soil layers above will be formed. And it is part of weathered rock and part weathered soil. All right. So we have our first layer of bedrock out of the Oreos and our second layer um, out of of parent material out of uh, chocolate and butterscotch chips. So our next layer will be with the pudding. So open your pudding cup or take whatever pudding you have and take your spoon and just kind of dump it in. Make sure it's spread all around so it covers the layer of butterscotch chips. Here, I'll pull that closer. Um, I used about half a pudding cup, but you could use a whole pudding cup depending on how um, how much room you have in your cup for the different layers. So kind of spread it around, make sure it's flat and covers the um, parent material layer. So there you go. It's okay if it gets on the side of the cup, that's going to happen when you put it in. Um, so the... Pudding represents subsoil. 
So subsoil is not high in organic matter concentrations, but it has rich minerals for plants and trees. Um, and the plants and trees find these minerals with their roots. Um, this layer is actually hidden and it is directly affected by water movement. So as you can see, it's more liquidy than the rest of the layers. All right. So then the next layer we're going to be putting in on top of the subsoil made out of pudding is our um, crushed up Oreos. So I just have them on the plate here. I'm just going to kind of slide them in. And again, make sure they cover all of the pudding. So I would say probably about three crushed up Oreos. Um, you could always do more or less though, depending on what you have. All right, so we have our bedrock made out of Oreos, our chocolate and butterscotch chips, which represent parent material, our pudding, which represents subsoil, and now we have these crushed up Oreos, which represent topsoil. So this is the top layer of soil, like the name suggests, and topsoil provides the riches for mat, um, sorry, the riches of matter for seeds, and it also uh, has nutrients, bacteria, and fungi that live there. All right. So our next layer is going to be our uh, green colored coconut, shredded coconut. Um, I just put this in a bowl and put like a couple drops of the green food coloring and just mix it up. So it's uh, super simple. So put this on top of your crushed up Oreos, which represent top soil. All right. So you can see here we now have our green um, our green coconut sh shreds and these represent organic materials. So this layer is usually less than an inch thick. So as you can see this layer is th uh, less thick than the rest. And it consists of plant and animal residues that are decomposing. All right. So now you have all of your different soil layers made out of things that you can eat. Um, you can label them if you want. If you want to um, show your family before you eat it what each, um, what each layer represents, that would be cool. Um, to top it off, we're going to put some gummy worms um sticking out of the soil because as you know worms live in the ground live in soil they um they decompose things all right so i'm just kind of sticking them up alongside it there you go And there you go. Ooh. There are your gummy worms. They might not stick up perfectly well just because of the crushed um, Oreos, but you're going to eat it anyway. So there's your gummy worm sticking out of your edible soil. So once again, our Oreo at the bottom is bedrock. Our chips, our parent material, our pudding represents subsoil. The crushed up Oreos represent um, topsoil and the green coconut represents organic material. And of course, we have our gummy worms at the top. So here at the museum, we have a lot of different items in our collection that come from soil. So some of the things and these are all things that archaeologists find. So these artifacts include animal bones which may have been deposited naturally or may have been a source of food for another animal. And that's how they ended up um, in the soil for the archeologists to find. We also have stone flakes, which may have been used as tools for food processing, for clothing, um, or for hunting. Um, and we also have different types of charcoal which indicate that there may have been a fire pit used for cooking or um, maybe from a natural fire. 
So these are all things that archaeologists can find in soil, and we happen to have them in our collection at the museum. So if you're interested in seeing some of these uh, artifacts, you can check out our archaeology exhibit uh, here at the museum. We're open Monday to Saturday, 9.30 to 4. Um, and we would love to have you. Um, you do have to be fully vaccinated to attend the museum. Um, and children under 12, sorry, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Okay, no, it passed. Um, children under 12 um, who aren't able to get the vaccine must be accompanied by a fully vaccinated household member. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed making edible soil. Um, eat up. I bet it's going to taste really good. Um, and I hope you learned something today about all of the different um, layers of soil and about what archaeologists can find in soil and some things that you can see here at the museum. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed.